Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement custom Google authentication for your AppSmith applications using Xano. Xano is a no-code backend that offers the suite of authentication strategies and today's video will be about implementing Google Auth using Xano and AppSmith. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without further delay, let's get started. Alright, so taking a look at the application we have on the screen right here, we have a home page application which we want protected by the authentication we're going to be building out. So this is the main dashboard or the home page of our application and we want this protected behind the Google Auth we'll be building out. So to get started, the first thing we need to do is to create a Xano account. It's free, so I'm going to create a Xano account right now. So my name, confidence, email address, Put in my password. I am a developer. Select one, building an internal tool. And we need to agree to them. So I'm just going to click on the sign up button. All right. So I am an intermediate developer, for example. Um, I'm going to select other and say AppSmith. And I would be starting from scratch. Yeah, starting fresh with Xano. So I'm going to click on continue. This is going to create a workspace using my name and we can click on start from scratch. We are giving a user table by default. So we're going to be using a default user table. I do not need other tables and we want to make sure that uh, we have CRUD APIs for the user table. So I'm just going to click on continue and let's skip this. For authentication, this is really important. So you can go in to use any of these authentication flows. This video is going to be about Google authentication. So I'm just going to highlight Google and authentication and click on finish. And this is going to take us to the dashboard with everything set up. So the first thing I need to do here is to go to make an adjustment to the environment variable because taking a look at this, I need to configure my Google Auth client ID and also the client secrets. So in order to do this, I need to click on manage and head over to my Google Cloud Console and create new auth credentials for my Xano instance that we just finished setting up. So I'm going to create new credentials and this is going to be auth client ID. For the um, application type, this is going to be web. So for the name, I'm just going to call the Xano. And for the authorized JavaScript origins, I'll come back to fix all of this. So I'm just going to click on the create button. And here we have the client ID, which I can copy over and paste it right here. And we also can go copy over the client secret and paste this right here. And we can save this and everything looks good. So we'll have everything from the Xano end configured. And heading over to the API tab, you can see that we have a Google Auth API endpoint, which is what we'll be using to interact with the Google login flow. So going back to AppSmith, the first thing I need to do here is to create a login screen uh, that would actually initiate the login process. So let's create a new page. And I'm going to call this page login. All right. This is going to be a really simple page. So it's going to have a container that has some text saying login. So this is going to be login. And we can style this a bit. All right, so I can move this to the center. And just below this, we would have a button to say login with Google. So let's say login with Google. All right, and we can style this button a bit and set this button to blue and we have the login with Google button configured. So this looks good. The first thing we need to do here is to initiate the login process. And in order to do this, we have the init API endpoints right here under the Google APIs. So I'm just going to click on this and taking a look at this API, it, re it requires a redirect URI as a parameter passed to it. So let's copy this over and make use of it in the AppSmith application. So for my login page, I'm going to create a new API. So let's create a new API and let's call this init API and paste in 
um, the URL we just copied over. Then for params, we need to pass in the redirect URI. All right. And for the redirect URI, this would be the page we want opened up after the login process is initiated. That is after you have the Google pop-up where you select your account and you have selected an account. That will be the URI you'll be taking to after the account selection process is done. Um, so for this, we will need to create a second page. And the reason why we're creating a second page and not using the login page is because right now on AppSmith, you cannot run JavaScript on page load. And we need to perform some JavaScript um, stuff such as running an API and also saving the user's data to the store as you later see. Right now, you can't do this, but in the coming weeks, we are currently working on a feature right now. And in the coming weeks, you would be able to run JavaScript on page load. So um, for now, I'm just going to create a second page and I'm going to call this page welcome. All right, this is going to be the welcome page. I'm going to get the URL of the welcome page. Notice that this is the URL in the edit mode, which would mean that when this application is published, because it's not going to have the forward slash edit, we need to make sure that URLs are edited not to have the edit route. All right, so let's head back to the init API. For the params, I'm just going to pass this right here. And we also need to head to the Google um, credentials we created for Xano and set the authorized redirect URIs to be the same as the uh, one we are passing to the init API. So I'm just going to save this. And now we can run this, for example, and we have some auth URL being passed back. So let's head back to the page and configure it to run whenever the login button is clicked on. So when the login button is clicked on, we want to execute the init API. And when that's successful, we want to perform a navigation to the auth URL that is returned back um, from that API call. So for the page, this is going to be init API dot data dot auth URL and we have this configured. So we can actually go give this a try. So I'm just going to click on the login button. And here we are taking to the welcome page, as you can see. Now we're in the welcome page. And taking a look at the URL, you can see that we have some code token appended to it. So the next thing we need to do is to send this code token back to Xano and have it exchange for the user's actual data so that we can get back the user's name, email, and a token that can be used to perform API calls for that particular user. So let's do this, uh, heading back to Xano. We have the um, login API and we also have the sign up API. But we also have the continue API, which combines the login and sign up API, such that if someone is coming to use the application for the first time and doesn't already have an account, the user would be able to sign up using the continue API. And if the user is a returning user, the user will be able to sign in using the continue API. So let's go ahead to make use of the continue API. And you can see this takes in code and the redirect URI as parameters. So I'm going to copy this over and let's head back to the AppSmith application and use this right here. So in the welcome page, I am going to create a new API. So let's create a new API and call this continue API. And then we can paste in the URL we just copied and pass in some parameters to it. So this is going to be code and the code would be pulled from the query param that you saw on the URL earlier. So this is going to be appsmith.url.queryparams.code All right. I also need to send the authorized um, redirect URI. So this is redirect URI. And I'm just going to get this back. All right. So I'm going to paste this right here. And, and this is the URI of the welcome page. So we're sending this back a second time. So this looks good. And what we can do here is to um, test this out by clicking on the run button. And you can see that uh, we have some interesting data coming back. We have my name because I tried logging in with Google and you also have my email address showing up right here. And also a token here is passed that can be used to make further API calls to the Xano backend as this particular 
user shown right here. So we have all of this coming back and we can actually save this in the store locally and use it within the application. So to do this, I am just going to bring in a container widget. And this is the reason why we created the second welcome page in order to add this second step of storing when a user clicks on the button. So we need to bring in a button, for example. So this is going to be a button. We can actually bring in an image to say continue. So I'm just going to bring in an image right here and paste in the image URL and bring in some text to say continue. So let's say come. Uh, let's say welcome and then the name of the login user which is going to come from continue api dot data dot name all right that looks good and i can expand this so that everything is visible all right that looks good and we can say continue here on the button so let's say continue and we have the button looking nice so when this button is clicked on what we want to do is to store the user's data in the store and then perform the navigation to the home page so let's do that uh, in order to do this i'm just going to use an ify so this is going to be um ify right here and let's invoke this all right so first thing i need to do here is to save the user's data to the store so I'm going to use store value and for the key, let's say user and for the data, this is going to be coming from the data returned back from the continue API. So this will be continue API dot data and this has the user's name, email and token. All right. And then we can navigate to the home page. All right. This looks good. So we can give this a test by clicking on the continue button and you can see that we have been taken to the home page and this looks good. Now that we have the user's data and we're in the home page, we can actually go in to display the user's information like the user's email, for example. So we can say something like appsmith.store.user because at this point, we have the user's data saved in the appsmith store. So this will be user.email, all right? And we have the email showing up and we can also add a button to log out so let's just bring a button right here and say log out all right and this similarly would um, do two things um, would remove the user's data from the store and then take the user to the login page so let's write some javascript for this all right first thing we want to do is to remove the user from the store so this is going to be store value uh, for the user key this is going to be set to undefined to delete that key and the next thing we need to do here is to um, navigate to the login page so we want to navigate to the login page all right this looks good but the problem right now is that if a user has a direct link to the home page of our application, which contains the main dashboard we want protected, the user at this point would still be able to see uh, the main dashboard of our application. In order to prevent user from seeing that, we can configure the application in such a way that if the user is authenticated and tries to visit this URL, we actually show an authenticated tab which shows information about the application and you have a table and a map and all of that. Else, if the user is not logged in, we can show an error tab here to tell the user to go log in. So that's one way we can do this. And in order to do that, I'm just going to um, quickly rename this tab. So we are going to have two tabs. Instead of tab one and tab two, we are going to have an authenticated tab. And the second tab would be an unauthenticated tab. All right. And this looks good. For the unauthenticated tab, I'm just going to display an image right here so let's put an image and we can put some text here to say uh, not so fast all right and then lastly we can put in a button here to say um, go to login for example so let's say login all right 
So we have the login button. And when this is clicked on, we just want to navigate to the login page because the user is not logged in. So we can have the user go login. All right, and this looks good. All right, so this is done. Um, but the final thing we need to do here is that we need to determine what tab to show based on the user's logged in state. So for the default tab property here, I'm just going to edit this to try to determine what tab to show based on the login state. So this is going to be appsmith.store.user. So if there is a user in the store, um, what we can do here is to show authenticated tab. So let's do dot user. And let's just check for the user's token. We can do the user token, for example. So if there is a token, we can display the authenticated tab. Else, we can go display the unauthenticated tab. And to make this look clean, we can hide the tab headers right here to make it look like a clean single application. And this looks good. All right. So to test this out, I'm going to try to copy the URL of the homepage. I'm just going to copy this over and then let's log out. And now I'm going to try to visit the home page. So I'm just going to paste this here. And you can see that I am faced with the um, padlock image. And here I have to go and log in. So I'm just going to go to login. And now let's log in with Google. And we can click on the continue button. And now we are able to see the dashboard which has been protected using the Google authentication. So this is how easy it is for you to set up Google Auth using Xano and AppSmith. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, since we are in the edit mode, all URLs have the forward slash edit. So when the application is deployed, you won't have the edit URL anymore. So what you, what you need to do in that case is that when the application is ready to be deployed, all you need to go do is to edit the redirect URL right here. So you need to make sure you don't have edit anymore here. So you can save this. And also you need to head back to the um, init and continue APIs and also edit the redirect URLs in those two instances, not to have the edit route. So that's all you need to do to set this up. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please let us know by leaving a like. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. That'll be all for today. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.